This time, it's the fastest handgun action with race guns at the USPSA Open Nationals. Plus, zombies take over a multi-gun match in the heartland. And veterans are honored with a day of family fun at the race. This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories of America's shooting sports. It's called practical pistol competition, but the enhanced guns in the open division are no more practical than top fuel dragsters. They're race guns based on the 1911 design, but with compensators to reduce recoil, red dot optics for quick target acquisition, and fed by double stack magazines with up to 21 rounds per load. In the hands of the best shooters in the country, the Open Nationals are the fastest action you can see. John and Tony have the highlights from Florida. The Universal Shooting Academy in Central Florida is the host range for the USPSA's Handgun Nationals. And this year, the stage designers sharpened their pencils on the 21 courses of fire to create what may be the most technical and demanding nationals to date. We've got a little bit of everything for the, for, the, for the people who want to shoot it, but it is difficult. It's a technically difficult match, and, um, and I think a lot of people are going to be challenged by it. And one of the first challenges for the men of the Super Squad will be Stage 7. The key variable is the three-target array behind the steel hard cover. There is time to be made if the shooters can hook up on the move. Eddie Garcia will be first, and he's starting on the right. There is the middle array. He's planning his feet for these shots. That costs time. A quick reload to the final position. And it's all over in 18.36 seconds. Max Michelle is next. And right away, there's the key difference. He is starting on the left. This should eliminate one of the positions in the middle for Max. Let's see if it works. One extra shot on the first steal there. He's gone to the end. He'll have to come back for that last steal. And there it is, more than three seconds faster than Eddie. 15-11 is the fastest time we've had all match. Oh, awesome, dude. That's cool. So, good job, sir. Thank you very much for working. Fastest so far for the match. Make ready! But there are some heavy hitters yet to run the stage, like Casey Eusebio. Casey is lining up in the left as well, and starts on the long paper ray and the single steal. Middle array. Like Max, Casey has left that third steal. And there it is. 13.19 raises the bar again. Chris Tilly will be last to tackle stage seven. And lining up on the left has become the popular strategy. Through the middle array. And there's the third steal. This is a fast run for Chris. The clock stops at 13.18, but his accuracy suffers. That was fast, bro. Yeah, a little too fast. Didn't aim enough like an eight to a couple deltas, but it's a fun stage. The next challenge for the squad, stage eight, known as Not Today 2. A quick stage with a challenging start. Your unloaded gun and all magazines for the stage will be placed anywhere on barrel. Muzzle down range, laying flat on its side, unsupported. After that, there's a couple of swingers protected by hardcover at the back of the stage. Junior shooter Kincaid Ross will be first, and with 100 match points on the line here, he needs a solid performance. On the start signal, he moves left while loading, and he is very quick on the trigger. Into the swingers, and his timing looks good but he's left one of the steel standing. The clock stops at 12.30, but the lost points for the missed steal hurt his score. Chris Tilly is next, and on the barrel, his gun appears to be leaning on the left side thumb rest. It could throw off his start. On the buzzer, it's not a problem. Into the swingers. There's an extra shot on the left target. At the end, he's got just enough lean angle to catch the final paper target. 
Casey Eusebio will be the last shooter for the squad. He's seen Chris put up the top score, so he knows what he has to do. The extras on steel here do not help. Into the final position hard, and it's all over in 12.58 seconds. A competitive time, but Casey's target points give the edge to Chris. Here are the two paper targets seen in this national. All open guns are major power factor, so the points stack up like this. A zone hits are five, B and C zone hits are four, and D zone hits are two. Steel is worth five points and must fall to score. And there are four steel on the final stage for day one, plus a precarious final position to see the final paper targets. The stage known as downslide is worth 140 points. Working out the final position seems to be everyone's focus. Can we shoot like that? Supine? Yes. As long as you're in this area, you shoot. Max will be first to try his plan. On the start signal, he drives right, shooting the open paper on the move. There's his reload, and he's into the prone position. It's a solid run, but Max wants better. Uh, it just went okay, it wasn't great, but not what I needed after the last stage. I needed a good one here. Casey's up, and watch for him to go supine instead of prone at the end. On the start signal, he drives left. And there's his reload early. Final position now. And it's all over in 16.32, but Casey knows there's trouble up range. Dropping too many points gives the edge to Max. Well, the position was quick to get into, but it ended up costing Casey in accuracy. And for others like Max, being able to rest the magazine on the platform allowed for a steadier hold on the longer shots. After the break, we'll have more from the 2015 USPSA Nationals here in Frostproof, Florida. It was pretty good, huh? Yeah, it was. Right, we'll be right back. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light, crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design. It's important to note as we follow the front runners through this national that there is another group vying for top honors. Very true. The top lady shooters in the country are also here battling it out over the 21 courses of fire. The first challenge for the ladies will be stage 20, an 18 round medium course worth 90 points. Jesse Duff has set her plan for the two clamshell targets and now it's time to execute. On the start, she is fast through the first targets. She's deliberate on that far paper array. There is a no shoot out there to look out for. There's the left side clamshell. And she's all done in 14.59 seconds. It's a hard match. It's the hardest nationals we've seen in a while. And it's, it's testing everybody. We've got 20 yard partials, 20 yard movers. It's hard, but it's all right. It's a long match, still got a lot of points left. Lauren Cannon is next, and though she is a tick off the pace set by Jesse, she is making hits. Lauren stays composed through the difficult middle array, and it pays off. 87 target points give her the top lady score for the stage and good momentum leading into the next course of fire. Stacked Standards is an 18 round, 90 point course of fire shot in two strings. In the first string, it's freestyle and then strong hand only. And the second string is weak hand only. Stacking is allowed, and that means shooters can choose to put three shots on whichever target with whichever grip style they feel most comfortable. And when you have hard cover and no shoots in play, strategy becomes critical. Any area painted black on a paper target is considered hard cover. Hits in this area do not score. 
Lauren Cannon is first, and string one starts off freestyle with both hands on the gun, beginning with the hardcover protected targets. On the reload, she's going strong hand on the close no-shoot targets, a solid approach. String two is weak hand only, and she's got the open targets, the shots are measured, and it's a good run for the shooter from Colorado. I'm really happy. We can do something I had to work on, so I couldn't be happier. Now it's Jesse, and she is following the same plan Lauren ran, but Jesse is a bit quicker. String two is weekend, and Jesse's experience in Bianchi competition shows here in her recoil management. It kind of gives you a little bit more confidence knowing you can shoot your weak hand string on the open target. So, had a good stage. I needed it. I'm just slowly climbing back where I need to be. The men's open super squad has arrived on the long course known as Not So Fast. Not So Fast is a 30 round, 150 point Comstock course of fire. There are 14 classic targets and two poppers. The start position is standing anywhere outside the shooting area, hands naturally at your side. Your gun will be unloaded and holstered. Chris Tilly will lead off for the squad. And that is how you pull an unloaded start. Lightning quick. A little pause there waiting for the swinger. At the end, the timer shows 16.85 with 145 target points. The unloaded start from the holster adds just a little more difficulty to an already tricky course of fire. For Lesgar Murdoch, it's over in a flash. And when you watch his footwork, you can see how he earned the nickname Speedy. The clock stops at 17.31. Now it's Max. And once again, the unloaded start offers no drama. Just a slight pause there, waiting for the swinger. The clock stops at 16.95. There's just one piece of steel. I nicked it on the top, and I thought I hit it because I was getting ready to move, and it just threw me off just enough to um, kind of screw me up there. I shot four more shots at it before I got it. So uh, it wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible either. Stage 19 of the match, ASAP. A 100-point course of fire with nine paper and two steel, one of which is the activator that releases the trolley with three paper targets shuffled in with no shoots. Now, when you consider that the shooters will address this moving target array from 20 yards, you start to see the challenge of this stage. Shannon Smith is first into the right array, and there's the activator for the trolley. He's got the close steel and the static paper just as the moving targets appear. He takes the final two targets on the lean. Super scary stage. That thing is going uh, real fast. There's some penalty targets out there. So you actually have to lead the target you're shooting at, which means you're aiming right at the edge of the penalty target, which is pretty scary for guys that don't like to shoot penalty targets. Max Michelle is next, and this is the type of stage that plays to his strengths. Fast movement and accurate shooting. There's a double on the activator. He is pushing here. Into the final position with control. This is a solid run for Max. Next is Junior Kincaid Ross. Chalk that up to youthful enthusiasm. That movement before the buzzer isn't a penalty, but Kincaid has to reset and start over. This time he's good. And there's two for the activator. A quick pickup on the second steal. It's a best for the match performance from the junior shooter. Well, Kincaid wasn't the only shooter to leave a little bit early on that stage. That's true. Nick Neal also got caught jumping the buzzer and had to restart the stage. Now remember, the first time is a warning, but any time after that is an automatic 10-point procedural penalty. It's costly. We've got more from the Open Nationals coming next. What makes a legacy? Is it quality? Craftsmanship? 
Maybe it's the idea that every American deserves their right to security and peace of mind on and off the battlefield. What makes a legacy? Here at Colt, we're making it every day. Colt, built one at a time, proven every round. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable, and by Bushnell Performance Optics. There is one variable at any match that no shooter can control, the weather. And Central Florida in October can definitely be unpredictable and challenging. It's the final day of competition for the Open Super Squad, and there are a couple of high value stages on the agenda. And with storms building, everyone is on edge. Stage five is known as Anger Management 2. 145 points available with another challenging start. Unloaded, on the barrel. Chris Tilly tackles it in stride. At the back wall, Chris is nimble around both sides of the obstacle. 17.17 is solid. Now it's Max, and with the match winding down, he needs to gain some ground on Chris's lead. Chris left a little on the bone here, and Max is going for it. 16.92 and 136 target points will help. At this point, Casey Acebio would need a series of miracles to win this national. But that doesn't mean he's rolling over and giving up. He is poised to play the role of spoiler, and with nothing to lose, Casey lets it all hang out, going 15.76, taking full match points for the stage. The stage short timer is a 150.30 round course of fire and will be the final challenge for the men's open division super squad. If shooters can maintain accuracy and get into that 15 second zone, the hit factor could go over 10 points per second, making this a very valuable stage to finish on. The junior Kincaid Ross has hung on through the match and put himself in the hunt to take a place on the podium. He needs a strong run here to close the deal. He drives his STI through the stage with purpose, stopping the clock at 1441. But there is trouble on one of the targets. Alpha Mike. The shooter currently occupying the third place position in the overall is Shannon Smith. He must be solid here to keep his podium spot. Sixteen point two six seconds gives a little ground to Kincaid. Chris Tilly is leading the overall standings coming into the final stage, and he needs a safe run here to put himself out of reach. This will do it. Fifteen point six seven and one hundred forty two target points is a quality performance. As the looming storm finally arrives, Max steps up to make ready. The rain doesn't hamper his performance at all. Even with the overall win out of reach, Max manages to take the stage outright, going 14.90 with 146 target points. And it's all over just as the Florida skies open up again. It's a solid finish for Chris Tilly, holding off defending champion Max Michelle for the win. And with Shannon Smith and Junior Kincaid Ross rounding out the top four. In the ladies race for the title, it's Casey Cochran well in control. Jesse Duff a little more than 75 points back. Solid performance. Now our congratulations to the champions and all of the participants in this year's Open Handgun Nationals. It really was a great match. Still ahead, Jim's got the story of a French needle gun. Now, one of history's guns. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. Let's just say you're in too big a hurry and... What if... How about... Yes, that's covered. 
no matter how it gets broken, shattered, cracked, or crushed. But yes, that's covered, no questions asked. Lifetime warranty from Bushnell has your back. We'll repair or replace your product and ship it back at no cost to you. It's the strongest warranty in the business for when you need it most. Only from Bushnell. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand-fitted to perfection because you'll accept no less. The 1860s were a decade of remarkable change in firearms technology. Muzzle-loading smoothbores were giving away to breech-loading rifles. Most were ignited by a percussion cap. But there were developments in the first self-contained cartridges. In France, the cartridge was paper and linen touched off by a needle. And the rifle that fired the cartridge went to war with Germany. The Chassepo is now one of history's guns. French soldiers knew it as the Fusil Model, rifle model, 1866, but better known as the Chassepo bolt-action rifle. My first shot, 200 yards, I hit, hit the steel target. I can't do much better than that. The gun shoots better than I can. France adopted the Chassepo in 1867 as its primary infantry service weapon. In its day, it was a big step forward in French battlefield technology. The Chassepot is interesting and it was France's first real general issue breech loading rifle. It, not to say that the French didn't have other breech loaders prior to this, but this one was pretty much the first general issue one. And it, it uh, kind of paved the way for, uh, for the developments in firearms for the French. In fact, the French built more than a million of these rifles in an effort to keep pace in a small arms race with their aggressive German neighbors. Germany was well armed with its own bolt action, the Dries needle gun. And the German Dries needle gun came in the 1840s and it, was, uh, it fired a self-contained paper cartridge. Well, the French figured they could do better and they did. This is really a superb gun of its type. The rifle is the creation of Anton Alphonse Chassepo, an inventor who experimented for years with bolt-action rifle designs before he finally hit on this one. Far, far superior to the German Dreisen needle gun, no question about it. The Chassepo was a much lighter, handier arm, fired a much more effective cartridge, it was more accurate, had a greater range, and uh, just basically a simpler, better gun. The Chassepo fires a self-contained black powder cartridge, not metallic, but paper with an outer linen wrapper. The bullet is 11 millimeters, about 43 caliber. To load it, you have to you cock it, open the bolt. This is a, an exact copy of the French Chassepo round. The uh, priming is inside the case, and uh, a needle punctures the base and, and hits the primer and ignites the uh, powder and sets off the charge. Simply load it in. Now you've got a needle in here and you've also got a rubber gasket. And that rubber gasket uh, seals, the, seals the breech. It's sealed much better than the German Dreisen needle gun did. You simply close it and now the gun's ready to fire. The needle, basically a firing pin, is impossible to see without taking the rifle's action apart but it pops out of this tiny hole in the bolt when the trigger is pulled. And since the cartridge is wrapped in paper and linen, there is nothing left to eject. The Chassepo is a fun gun to shoot. Reliable, it's certainly accurate. Um, with the proper cartridges, proper ammunition, I can see it would be a you know, very formidable, formidable foe to the Dreisen Needle gun. The service life of the Chassepo was relatively short. It saw action in only a single conflict, the Franco-Prussian War with Germany in 1871. Three years later, France retired it after seven years of service. One more victim of progress and the new metallic cartridge. It came out in 1866 at a time when the self-contained metallic cartridge was you know, a, a practical reality. So it was, it was almost, ob it was obsolete basically at the time it appeared. Still, the Chassepo has its place in service rifle history, if only as the beginning of the end 
for the self-contained paper cartridge. Chaspo is a very interesting gun. I'm a, I'm a big fan of French weapons. Uh, they made very, very good stuff, both quality-wise and design-wise. It's a very, very interesting rifle. The Chassepo, effective in one war, but quickly obsolete as the world's firearms designers moved on to the self-contained metallic cartridge. Well, still ahead, John survives a zombie-infiltrated three-gun match. The pandemic in the heartland is next. This is custom gun making, hand fitting, slide to frame, hand cutting the magwell, blending the surfaces of the slide, the frame, and the beaver tail. At every step, a Les Bear Custom 1911 is hand fitted to tolerances no CNC machine can match for match grade accuracy. And a Les Bear Custom 1911 is priced at one third of what you'd pay any other gun maker. See all the 1911s and rifles at lesbear.com. Shooting USA is brought to you by Blackhawk, honor as a way of life, and by the M&P by Smith & Wesson, advanced by design. It wasn't too long ago that the zombie theme infected the gun industry, targets, ammunition, even limited edition guns in a few cases. Well, for Hornady, the trend led to a line of ammunition and a multi-gun match that continues to be a huge draw. It's the pandemic in the heartland, and it is a challenge for new shooters and the top pros. It's like Halloween in the summer in Nebraska. Once again, there is something wrong in Grand Island, Nebraska. The dead are not staying that way but a group of intrepid shooters have banded together to make right that which is wrong. Those who would heed the call to battle the undead come from all walks of life. Got a little bit up here, waiting to help fight on turn. That's pulling that put me down with the rest of them. There are even industry executives like Smith & Wesson's president, James Debney, shooting with Steve and Jason Hornady. Talk to me. How it was, was it? a little confusing. I wish Jason all the best. <laughs> I hope he gets as confused as I did. And it turns out James and Jason have upped the stakes a bit. No, it'll be 40 at that point in time. I will be. Oh, we got yes. some skin in this game, do we? We do now, side match, side bet. <laughs> As Jason makes his way through the challenge of stage six, it is clear that he is pushing. You're in his head right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will be in a minute. That makes it good. <laughs> After all, there is money on the line. Time. 89. What was his? It's like 120. I don't recall. Boom, shaka laka! What was it? <laughs> I beat you. 40. <laughs> no, you pay me 40. No, you're back to even. No, 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 no. In the end, I think I had to pay him $50, <laughs> and um, it was a really hard $50 to pay out. Actually, yeah, 50 But he won at the right time. He did not beat me in the match. I smoked you. It will put you at ease to know there are many, let's say, more efficient zombie slayers at work in the match like Hunter Kale. And zombies beware, Hunter has a new open division pistol. This is my uh, newest open 2011. Jack Travers went and made a uh, extension for me. He cut it out of a Dremel wrench um, and welded his own custom little steel piece and extension through the safety. So that way I can draw, disengage the safety and shoot just like anybody else would with a 2011. I'll draw like this. My nub is not touching the safety when I'm drawing. When I come up, I move it on top of it, turn it down. I've got a few mods on it that I've had to do myself, uh, like the, that's not really stippling, I guess it's dremeling. <laughs> but I drill a hole in the side of the grip so I get a reference point of where my nub will be every time I pull the trigger. Of course, it's got the 
nub mount, we have JB Weld, steel, we haven't upgraded from that yet. Uh, zip ties and double sided tape, and I'm shooting 120 power factor out of it. So it's just a pea shooter, man, it shoots like a drink. As the weather turns for the worse, we meet some other highly efficient eradicators of evil, like Jerry Mitchlick. And though Jerry makes it look easy, there are some real shooting challenges in this match. Using claybirds as rifle targets is one of the classics. The trick is a proper hold over, as Jerry points out. Zombies everywhere. <laughs> Nobody shooting high, everybody shoots low. I've never personally done that, but I heard rumor it's possible. <laughs> With all of the strangeness that is this match, it's not surprising that some of the shooters are a little out of sorts. Jerry runs the tricky stage three, a true multi-gun test that starts with the rifle. There is some added difficulty for Jerry from the weather, but he fights through to put all of the undead back where they belong. It's cold out here, man. <laughs> Zombies like to head me. <laughs> I like a little wind when I shoot, apparently, so I had a lot of it. It's fun. The Claybird rifle target. It's a tricky one, and it's one way that match organizers can create challenges for the rifle on flat pistol bays. You don't have to shoot the rifle 400 yards every time to test skills. 50 yards on one of these is an equally daunting challenge. But there are more evil walking dead to contend with, and one way to do it more effectively, coming next. Day after day, it's there. It's ready for when you need it the most. The Rapid Safe combines fast, touch free ease of use with safety and security. The Rapid Safe from Hornady. Shooting USA is brought to you by STI and the continuing evolution of the 1911, and by Comptac Everyday Carry Holsters. A lot goes into making the pandemic in the heartland the successful match that it is. From the competitors who dress up, to the stage design, the custom targets, even the world-class prize table. It all adds up to an event that draws people from around the country to Grand Island, Nebraska. The pandemic in the heartland, it's, it's, it's one of a kind, it truly is. I, it's a great match and I get no credit whatsoever for it because I haven't done anything with it. It's all been the, the young people down there at the end and, and the people at the Heartland Shooting Park that have put this thing together. All of, we have a bunch of engineers, I have no clue how much engineering time has actually gone into designing some of these things and I probably don't want to know. One feat of engineering is the first challenge on stage seven. It starts with a shot from the can cannon. A successful hit there releases the swinging bar that takes out the whole plate rack of zombies. It has become somewhat of a tradition at this match to have targets that react with Tannerite. This year, there are four of them on the shotgun targets at the end of stage six. It's a pistol and shotgun only stage that starts with the shooter fighting their way to the house to deposit a CD that carries a message of hope to other fighters of the undead. From there, it's the shotgun on steel targets and those reactive targets at the end. It turns out the Tannerite will ignite even if you don't make a solid hit on the steel. And that costs me time. The one makeup late on that shotgun target, but thankfully that match saver was there, so I got that one last shot in. Pretty good run. Things went boom. Stand by. Next on the stage is Jerry. Because he is in the open division, he has the advantage of a red dot on his M&P core pistol, and he puts it to good use. with the shotgun now, and there are few shooters out there that can match this pace. A 
A quick stick load and the four Tannerite targets are down. It's a great run for Jerry. I like that point shoot. I can it. No, it was kind of fun. It was uh, a little bit ramped up for that one, so. Back on stage three, Katie Francis is putting the last of the zombies where they belong. With the pistol, she is measured and efficient on the long steel targets. Once Katie makes her way to her shotgun, she turns up the heat. It's all over in a little under 70 seconds. On stage seven, Jesse Tischhauser is facing the last of the Walking Dead in his match. And like the stages before, this is going very well for the shooter from Oklahoma. It's a solid run that caps Jesse's overall win in the tactical division. Man, this zombie match is fun. Just the, the props you've got out here, the, uh, the pop can gun, the exploding target. Uh, win or lose, you're gonna have a good time here. This is exactly what hosts Steve and Jason Hornady want to hear. This is a try it the first time, run what you brung match. We don't care if you're shooting a pump action and a single 45. Just try and get involved, come have a good time, check it out. You know, I heard a couple of guys talk out there yesterday and they weren't talking to me. I just overheard one and, and one of them was saying to somebody, he says, you know, I shoot a lot of matches. My company sends me to a lot of matches all around the country. And he said, this is the most fun match that I go to of all of them. And that's what we want. There will be more of the undead to deal with next year. Everyone bravely fought the zombie hordes at the Hornaday pandemic 2015, but ultimately, we could not defeat the undead. Well, up next, a couple of options in 1911s for concealed carry. Introducing the M&P M2.0 by Smith & Wesson, enhanced for complete shootability. Featuring a new aggressive grip texture, the famous M&P Optimal Grip Angle, four interchangeable palm swell grips for nearly any hand size, a light, crisp trigger with a clear tactile reset. Everything you love about the M&P pistol made even better. The new M&P M2.0, advanced by design. Shooting USA is brought to you by Colt. Built one at a time, proven every round. Here's an option for concealed carry for those who want the reliability and feel of a 1911. This is the Colt Defender Compact 1911, and it's marked lightweight, primarily because of the aluminum alloy frame. Now, there are two calibers available in the Defender line, 9mm like this one, or 45 ACP. In 45, you'll get 7 plus 1 capacity, or 8 plus 1 capacity from the 9. The 3 inch bull barrel design lends itself to accuracy, as do the Novak carry contour sights with white dots. The ejection port is cut low and flared to help mitigate the chance of a malfunction. One more thing that I like about the Defender, the Hogue one-piece wrap-around grips with finger grooves. It's the classic Hogue overmolded material that makes this gun a pleasure to shoot. Now one trade-off should you choose the Defender as your carry gun, even though it says lightweight, in 9mm the Defender weighs in at 1 pound, 15 ounces fully loaded. But for those who want the peace of mind that comes with a 1911, well the Defender has that in spades. Suggested retail, a little over 950. Jim? Here is the newest 1911 from Les Bear Custom that combines the features of two of Les's best-selling models into one, the Stinger and the Monolith. This is the GT Monolith Stinger, available in 45 ACP or 38 Super, your choice. It's the officer-sized grip frame with the extended dust cover matching the Comanche slide that adds a bit of muzzle weight to help control recoil. It is a compact intended for carry with seven rounds of 45 in the magazine eight rounds of 38 Super. For a compact, it handles great, and it's finished with all the custom touches of a hand-fitted, hand-built custom. All corners are broken and rounded. The front strap is hand-cut, 30 lines per inch checkering, 
and the GT Stinger monolith includes Rolo night sights and Ambi safeties. The retail price in blue is $2,915. Finished in hard chrome like this one is a $300 option. And there will be a wait for your order if you choose to carry the very best in a custom fitted 1911 compact. Well, still ahead, honoring wounded veterans with a day for the entire family. That's next. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. On March 29th, 1911, the armed forces adopted a pistol that would change the world. For decades to come, men and women relied on the most trusted pistol in history as they fought the toughest battles to protect our freedom. Today, we celebrate another great victory, introducing the all-new Colt Competition Pistol, designed for heroes, created for champions. We didn't just make history, we're still making it. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Bear Customs 1911s, hand fitted to perfection because you'll accept no less. There is no better cause than helping the men and women who have served our country. And that is why HAVA was organized by the firearms industry. It stands for Honored American Veterans of Field to support disabled veterans with hunting and shooting events around the country. Well, one of those HAVA events is Family Range Day near Fort Campbell, Kentucky, organized by a disabled vet giving back to others and their families. And it begins with a special performance. He may be the closest resemblance to Robin Hood that these kids will ever see. And the master of the longbow captures their interest. <laughs> a little thrill, lots of laughter, and today, honor. It's how exhibition archer Byron Ferguson begins his show at Hava's Family Range Day. Before I forget it, God bless all of you for your service, whether you're a veteran, a volunteer, or both. Uh, yeah, I came out here on my own time, and I paid my expenses and, and donated my exhibition. But look at them. They've donated their legs and their arms and, and they're in wheelchairs for the rest of their life. Just to, to see them forget about any issues they may be having, if it's only for a couple of minutes, and see them smile and laugh and clap, it makes a, it means a lot to me. Byron is referring to more than a hundred wounded warriors who brought their families to the Rock Castle Shooting Center. And Byron isn't the only one from Shooting USA volunteering his time. Our analyst, Tony Pignato, retired from the Army as a first sergeant. So today, he's giving back to his other family. Awesome! You did it! Was the dot floating around on you? It's an opportunity for the families to see why we do what we do or did what we did and just really get back in that camaraderie that we had, which is the main reason. You know, we didn't join the military for the money. Hell no. We didn't join it to go see in exciting places. Heck no. We joined it because we want all those, those great people around us. And it's an opportunity for the entire family to be part of the team. We're going to let everybody have a chance to shoot. You're going to get 10 rounds each. And that is also why Rick Cicero drove 12 hours from Florida, not as a wounded guest, but also as a volunteer. Rick was a military contractor in Afghanistan when he was wounded. For me, there's, there's a certain amount of responsibility in leadership. My son is active duty Army. My stepson is active duty Air Force. It's still family. And everybody that's ever served our country is family and looking after one another and being able to pass on something I've learned because maybe I had a little more background or a little more resources that I can pass on to someone else and get them back doing things that they miss prior to their injuries or, or post their service. And Rick too recognizes that HAVA is vital to the well-being of veterans when they return home. Before you know it, you've got the guy who's been sitting in his house wondering what he's gonna do, joining a shooting club, and now he's shooting every week and he's making friends and he's back into living and enjoying life again. And he's not just going to work and sitting home. 
So now we get that reintegration in it. You know, it brings back the, those senses of camaraderie that are so invaluable. Camaraderie that today would not be possible without support from the industry, like Sig Sauer, one of Hava's newest sponsors. We're all kind of binding together today to make it one special event for the veterans. When we look at the history of our country, uh, and not just recent history, but going back, we should always take care of our veterans because they've taken care of us. And the freedoms we experience today is because of them. And that's the feeling from Colt Manufacturing, also a supporter of HAVA. Oh, we brought you know, some of our classics from 1911 government models, and we also brought some of our MSR rifles, and everybody's just having a great time shooting them. You know, for us to give back in this way is uh, something that Colt's all about, so we're really happy to be here. And it's working. Steven Meisner from the Warrior Transition Battalion sees proof in the smiles of the wounded warriors he cares for. I work for the WTB, the, the unit that helps take care of the soldiers that are wounded. And I'm a vet too, so a lot of my guys are here. It's really good to see it happen. So it's vets helping vets get back to the range. Former Blackhawk pilot Trevor Bauckham is hosting this family range day for the third year. And if it wasn't for all you veterans, we wouldn't have any, uh, any of the freedoms we enjoy. So from all of us volunteers to all of you guys, thank you for everything you've done. Setting an example for other wounded veterans that they too can enjoy the shooting sports. I get to pay it back a little bit. I've gotten so much out of the shooting community since this happened to me. It's, um, it's given me something else to do, and it's really, it's, it's, it's done a lot for me. And so to be able to help other guys find it and get into it is, is nice. It gives them something to look forward to every year in the fall, and they come out and they have a good time, and I'm seeing some of them at the local range. You know, it's, they're getting out and they're having fun. For the disabled veteran community around here, I think it does something for them, and it gives them, uh, gives people purpose. Good job, 837 clean. And that would not be possible without folks like Trevor who continue to build support for HAVA from the industry. If you'd like to learn more about HAVA events, we have a link on our website. And there's more information on the USPSA if you're ready for open division competition. Or is the zombie three-gun match more your speed? Getting ready for the pandemic? It's all at shootingusa.com. For all of us, I'm Jim Scout, and shoot safely, shoot often, and keep them in the ten ring.